Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Monday Night Raw review. And tonight's Raw was from the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, we are on the build to Money in the Bank. And this Raw tonight, just like every other week, this was another horrible, shitty Raw. It's like these shows are getting worse and worse every single week. And, you know, I repeat myself, you know, every single week. These shows, these Raw shows every week are horrible. They are shitty. It's, it's like I said, I repeat myself every week with these shows. It's fucking terrible, these shows. So uh, let's get on uh, with the Raw review. And uh, the show opened up tonight with Alexa Bliss. Uh, she was out there. She was doing her a moment of bliss or moment of shit uh, talk show. She goes on to say that in three weeks, it's Money in the Bank. And the event will, of course, host two Money in the Bank matches. One for the men and one for the woman. It'll feature eight superstars, a total of eight superstars from both Raw and SmackDown. She introduces the four men from Raw competing in the men's Money in the Bank match. And those four men are Braun Strowman, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, and boring old Baron Corbin. Jesus Christ, we can't we can't escape Baron Corbin. So Corbin gets on the mic. He says his accolades can become a mouthful, and that we are going to enjoy it. The, the people are going to enjoy it when he possibly becomes a two-time. Money in the Bank winner. Oh yeah, so if he wins Money in the Bank again, he's going to fail it a second time when he cashes it in. So Ricochet ends up retaliating uh, to Corbin and says, Oh, are you going to be a two-time loser? Because you cashed in the Money in the Bank and failed. And McIntyre says to Corbin, you know, Ricochet has a point. Because after last week, he, Corbin, blew it. And so McIntyre says, when he wins the Money in the Bank contract, the power, you know, will be in his hands. And, uh, you know, McIntyre ends up cutting off Corbin because Corbin was saying, uh, you know, some shit. So... McIntyre cut him off and tells him to shut up and stick to the impressive aerial maneuvers and, you know, to leave the business talk to the grown-ups. Well, no, I'm sorry about that. I got my notes all mixed up. McIntyre actually said that to uh, Ricochet. So he was saying all that to Ricochet uh, when... Uh, McIntyre said, oh, leave the business talk to the grown-ups, me and the big guys, because, you know, Ricochet is maybe like 5'5", five, 5'7", five, five, who knows. So, yeah, so it was pretty much McIntyre making fun of uh, Ricochet's height. And, you know, he says uh, if he doesn't, McIntyre will drop him where he stands. And Corbin says... You know, he'll climb the ladder and retrieve the contract. And so McIntyre yells at him about stealing victories. And Corbin says, that's strategy. And McIntyre, you know, says, you know, threatens to drop him. You know, manages to drop him, but Corbin ended up uh, backing out. And so Strowman ends up. Uh, again on the mic, he says the reality of it is none, is none of them can stop him. And he goes on to say 
he wants to do a preview of the ladder match in tag team form. So Stroma was like, oh, why don't it be me and Ricochet versus you two, McIntyre and Corbin? And so that's how the segment ended, but, you know, it is meh segment. I mean, they're just, this is WWE being lazy uh, with this because, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, the Money in the Bank, uh, they had qualifying matches. You know, at least uh, they were entertaining. At least they were, you know, superstar. They were building to superstars, getting to have a chance to compete in the Money in the Bank. This was just all thrown together without having any qualifying matches. They're just like, oh yeah, let's get four competitors here. Let's let's throw them in to the Money in the Bank match, and there we go. We have our men's Money in the Bank match. Same thing that they did. Same thing they did for the woman also, which you know, it would have been good if WWE creative managed to book qualifying matches so that the superstars who win those matches they get a chance and get put into the Money in the Bank uh, matches, you know, for both the men and the women. But sadly. WWE did not do that. They were lazy. So, it, you know, what what more can I say? It it was just them. It was just them being lazy. So, and I knew we were gonna have a tag team match. You know, you know during this whole segment, I knew this was gonna lead to a tag team match, and we got it. We got it. So it was Ricochet and Braun Strowman versus McIntyre and Corbin tag team match. This was meh. This was pretty boring. The crowd was uh, dead silent for this. And when you know when Corbin's in the match, you know that it's going to be fucking boring. And uh, actually, when uh, I forgot to mention when Ricochet ended up uh, coming out in the uh, in the opening uh, segment, uh, he got a big pop from the crowd. Uh, which was uh, which was awesome. So, but uh, Ricochet and Braun Strowman uh, end up getting the win. Strowman end up hitting uh, the running power slam on Corbin. Tagged in Ricochet. Ricochet went to the top, hit the 630 on uh, Corbin, went for the pin. There you go. Ricochet and Braun Strowman end up uh, win the match. So, meh match. So very boring match. Then we went on to uh, the Usos uh, versus Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Another tag team match. Pretty much, basically, all the men matches tonight. They were. Tag team matches all throughout throughout this whole raw. All the men, all the men matches were tag team matches. I'm like, did Teddy Long book this show with the tag team matches? We're gonna have ourselves a tag team match, players. That's what it basically was tonight. Fucking tag team matches galore. So yeah, so it was the Usos versus Gallows and Anderson. Gallows and Anderson, uh, once again, on Raw. Uh, I guess they were uh, put on Raw uh, for the Superstar Shake-Up. So yeah, but this match itself, it was okay. You know, the Usos were entertaining. But when you have Gallows and Anderson in here, you know they're going to job. So... The Usos end up winning. Jimmy Uso end up hitting uh, the a splash to uh, a diving splash to uh, Luke Gallows. Went for the pin. There you go. The Usos end up winning the match. Now, what happened after the match? This was this was fucking terrible. This this was horrible. 
after the match, the Usos get on the mic, and they say that there is one tag team that are calling themselves the Top Guys, uh, which they were referring to the Revival. And then they show a video of what happened earlier today, and the video showed of Dash Wilder shaving Scott Dawson's back. He had, you know, a shaving cream uh, on all over his back. Dash Wilder's there just shaving it. I'm like, why, why, why is this, you know, being shown? I'm like, what the fuck? I should be like, this segment was brought to you by Gillette Fusion Razors. That's what it was. It was basically a advertisement for Gillette. That's what it basically was. And, and people, and they want to think that, oh, this is funny. No, it's not funny. It's fucking corny. It's fucking horrible. And so uh, the revival end up coming out. Wilder tells the Usos that that video was an invasion of their privacy. And so Scott Dawson explains, you know, to them, you know, reaching, you know, that reaching every part of his back isn't the easiest because he's so jacked. Sorry about that, but I was saying, you know, Scott Dawson end up saying. You know, reaching every part of his back isn't the easiest because he's so jacked. And he was like, he asked his best friend of 20 plus years for a little help. Wilder ends up saying, you know, that's right. His best friend asked for help and they have each other's back. And so the Usos, uh, you know, they, they asked for clarity on who shaves who. And the Revival say that they're done with them for now. And they have a match against the tag team champions later on. And they're like, when they're done with the tag team champions, better believe they're coming for the Usos. And the Usos end up saying to them that they get it. And they have a big match. And they'll, they'll be ready to welcome the Revival to the Uso Penitentiary. So yeah, this, this was terrible. This was fucking terrible. Gotta, gotta show them shaving, shave, you know, Dash Wilder shaving Scott Dawson's back as a comedy moment when it wasn't even funny to me. It was just corny and stupid. That's what that's what it was. That's what it was to me. Oh, fucking terrible. Then we had uh, The Miz come out. Uh, he came out from Miz TV. Miz says it's good to have Miz TV back on Raw. He says since the Superstar Shakeup, he's been uh, rejuvenated for new competition. He introduces his guest uh, for this Miz TV which was Bobby Lashley and Bobby Lashley came out by himself he didn't come out with Leo Rush because apparently Leo Rush has uh, some backstage heat uh, and it's been in it's been in the articles it's been in the news that Leo Rush has been uh, having backstage heat and he wasn't even at Raw tonight it showed uh, in an article that he was, I guess, somewhere in a hotel and he wasn't watching Raw. He was watching uh, Impractical Jokers. So it was, in an, it was in an article stating that Leo Rush wasn't at Raw tonight. So Lashley ends up saying that he's going to be answering the questions he would like to answer. <laughs> and Miz to that was like, Miz was to Lashley, I'm like, oh, are you going to speak in third person? As third person? And Lashley ends up telling Miz to watch what he says. Miz says 
you know, he thinks Lashley is the perfect guest for Miz's for Miz TV's return to Raw. And he ends up putting Lashley over as having the most uh, talent in all of WWE. And he says some folks think he has yet to put it all together. He goes on to say that it's not meant to be an insult. And it's just people. And he goes on to say people think Lashley hasn't reached his full potential. So Lashley goes on to say that he's been in. He's been back in WWE for a year. And in that span of a year, he's already a two-time Intercontinental Champion. And he says, oh, what has Miz done? And Miz ends up saying, you know, old Miz would have listed off his title reigns. And he says to Lashley that you could check uh, his Wikipedia to see how long that take. He goes on to say the point is nobody is questioning his potential. And if anything, he's an overachiever. Overachiever. He goes to Lashley, oh, have you seen my wife? And he says he did all that without a shred of Lashley's athletic potential. And because Miz said all that to Lashley, Lashley ends up bringing up uh, to Miz about how Shane ended up uh, beating him. Ended up beating up him and his dad. So Lashley ends up insulting uh, Miz's dad. And Miz had enough of that. Miz ended up brawling with Lashley uh, around the ring. Miz ends up uh, booting Lashley to the floor. And we saw like Miz uh, throwing uh, the chairs at uh, Lashley. And knowing this, we all knew that this was going to lead to a match. And eventually, it did. So we have Bobby Lashley versus The Miz. Which, this match was boring. This match was shit. Uh, it was back and forth between Lashley and uh, The Miz. You had Shane come out. Uh, Shane was uh, trying to distract The Miz. Shane ended up having uh, a picture of uh, Miz's dad, George, on the Titan Tron. And Shane was on the, uh, the ring apron. The Miz uh, tried to uh, punch Shane, but eventually uh, Lashley ended up coming in. End up spearing Miz. Lashley went for the pin, and Lashley ended up winning. Thanks to thanks uh, for the help with Shane McMahon. So Bobby Lashley wins. After the match, we saw uh, Shane McMahon. He ends up uh, kicking and punching uh, Miz. Miz eventually goes after Shane, but. Uh, Shane got the upper hand. Lashley ends up coming, coming back in, choke slams Miz, and we saw Shane uh, continue uh, to beat down on the Miz. He ended up blocking uh, the Miz uh, with the, you know, with the triangle choke. And when Shane had the triangle choke on the Miz, he was making him look at the picture of his dad. And he made uh, Miz end up uh, passing out. And so Shane ended up getting on the mic. And he ends up telling the Miz to remember that he is, in fact, the best in the world. And that was, and that was what happened after the match. But the match itself, it was garbage. It was boring with Bobby Lashley and the Miz. Boring match. Shitty match. Sorry about that, but uh, after it was Bobby Lashley versus The Miz, we had another tag team match. It was the Lucha House Party versus the War Raiders, not the Viking Raiders, not Ivar and Eric. It's, uh, you know, uh, sorry about that again. I keep getting interrupted. 
But, you know, it was another tag team match. It was Lucha House Party versus the War Raiders. Not the Viking Raiders, not Ivar and Eric. It's Hanson and Roe to me. But this was just a garbage match. It was a shitty match. We had uh, the War Raiders beat the Lucha House Party. Ended up uh, hitting uh, Kalisto with the, uh, the Viking experience, as what they would call it. And you could tell from the commentary team and uh, Mike Rome that they wanted to say the Viking experience. Like that, it just feels like that they want to slip that in there because they're so they're, they're so used to saying they're so used to thinking about how they how they were originally called, which was the Viking Experience. Which I can't I can't even get over that that they, that they would call them the Viking Experience, and then they would rename them, and then use their original name as the finisher for their move. Unbelievable. War Raiders end up winning. Not even calling them the Viking Raiders. So, garbage match. Then we had, yet again, Alexa Bliss comes out for a moment of shit. She introduces the woman participants in the Money in the Bank match. So here are your four women in the women's Money in the Bank match. First one is Natalia. So Natalia ends up coming out. She says she's never been Raw Women's Champion. But after she wins, that's all going to change. And Alexa, you know, tells Natalia, oh, we want to get through uh, this. And she moves right along. The second participant is, and I can't, I can't believe this. I can't believe that they would put her in this when she has accomplished nothing. And she's barely used on TV. That woman superstar is Dana Brooke. I'm like, you don't put in Ruby Riot, which to me, I think, you know, Ruby could have been uh, in this match. She'd be, she would have been my pick. She would have been my pick to win uh, the this, you know, the woman's money in the bank. But like I said, you don't put in Ruby. You don't put in Ruby Riot, but you put in Dana Brooke. Who is barely on TV? Who is barely on Raw every week? Why? Why? Uh, so Dana Brooke says, you know, she's so excited for this opportunity and she can't believe it's happening and that this is her chance to jump the line. And Natalia gets in her face and asks if she's saying, you know, that she held her back. To which, you know, Dana Brooke says, Natalia's, to which Natalia's gotten her opportunities. And Natalia says, everything she's gotten, she's earned. <laughs> and Alexa says, they clearly don't understand how this works. And to get their arguments off her show. So she can introduce, you know, the third participant entry in the Money in the Bank. So the third entrant in the Money in the Bank is Naomi. So Naomi says she's going to climb the ladder and retrieve the contract. Natalia and Dana Brooke, they're bickering about who's going to win. Alexa Bliss says to them, they're worse than the men and that they should be ashamed of themselves for interrupting 
a very important moment for another woman on the roster. And the uh, last uh, part, the last entry into uh, the woman's mind, the bank, is Alexa Bliss herself. So she ends up uh, putting herself in the woman's mind, the bank. And she tells them they can leave. She tells the woman that, uh, the other woman that they can leave so she can get the attention she deserves as a future two-time Miss Money in the Bank. And so Naomi wasn't having that. Naomi ended up challenging Alexa to a preview of the match. Alexa says to Naomi that she would, but she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to have a match. And that she's not wearing she's not wearing her gear anyway. And so Naomi says to Alexa, you know, that's funny because she knows that she can beat her with her shoes on or off. And that she doesn't think Alexa is as good as she says she is. And so we had Alexa agree to the match. So match uh, end up, you know, happening. But really, this whole segment, I can't, I can't believe Dana Brooke. WWE puts Dana Brooke in the woman's mind in the bank, but not Ruby Riot. I question WWE creative. Why? So, and then we and then we went to fucking the Firefly Funhouse. Oh God! I know a lot of people are really liking this Firefly Funhouse. Me, I I, I can't I can't get into it. This was this was terrible. We it showed Bray Wyatt uh, painting, and he realizes the camera is on him, and he says, "Oh, I, I love the paint." And he goes to say, "You know, painting is a way to express his suppressed feelings, and when you're expressing yourself, no one can ever truly hurt you." And so we saw a rabbit ends up popping up. Bright Wyatt greets him as uh, a ram as the rambling rabbit, and he, the rabbit ends up offering to show, you know, offering to show Bray Wyatt, you know, his painting. And so Bray Wyatt uh, turns to the camera, and he shows the picture of what he was painting. And the picture that he was painting was of a barn burning down with Sister Abigail uh, inside. And so then we see uh, Abby the Witch ends up speaking, says this is no time for games. <laughs> and Bray Wyatt ends up telling uh, the rabbit to get lost, to scram. And Abby tells Bray Wyatt you know, that he's a very bad boy, and he asks her to take it easy. And says it's all in the past, and that he's really sorry for what he did, and, you know, if we all forgive him. And Abby ends up telling Bray Wyatt to keep it down while she's getting her beauty rest. And so Bray ends up uh, saying that, Abby is a bit of a sociopath. And the rabbit ends up asking Bray Wyatt if sociopath is the word of the day. Wait a minute, did I just predict this last week? Saying, uh, you know, like, this is this is like Pee Wee's Playhouse, where is, he, is Bray Wyatt going to be, is Bray Wyatt or one of these characters in the uh, Firefly Funhouse is going to, you know, announce the secret word? I was right. So instead of the uh, the secret word, would have to scream, you know, if you watched Pee Wee's Playhouse, you know, 
They say, oh, is this the word of the day? And Bray Wyatt says, yes, it is. Hmm. Like I said, I've seen this before in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Well, you know, the screaming. You know, when, when they say, oh, whenever you say the secret word, scream real loud. So, Bray Wyatt ends up throwing it out for the kids. And he bids his uh, fireflies that he'll light the that he'll light the way as long as we let him in. And that, and that was the whole Firefly Funhouse segment. Ab absolute shit. Absolute garbage. My opinion. I know, I know a lot of people like this. If you like this, that's fine. It's cool. Not going to bash you. But we are all entitled to an, to an opinion. To our opinions. So, if you don't agree with my opinion, that's fine. So, but these old Firefly, Firefly Funhouse, I know it's the second week. Still, not impressed. I still think it's garbage. Still think it's shit. So, so moving on, we had a woman, we had the match Naomi versus Alexa Bliss. Uh, what? This, this was pretty boring. This match was boring. Naomi ended up getting the win, hit the split leg moonsault on Alexa Bliss, and during this match, Alexa, uh, shoes, her shoelaces were kept on coming untied, and so Alexa had to, to uh, retie them, and they kept on getting untied and loose, so Alexa had to keep uh, tying them back up, so she had a, a malfunction uh, during this match. Or as the articles would say, a wardrobe uh, malfunction with her shoes. So yeah, but Naomi ended up winning the match. Boring match. So then we had Charlie Caruso. She was interviewing uh, Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio was there with uh, his son Dominic. And Mysterio ends up saying that it's not easy being his size and living in the world of giants. He says when he gets knocked down, he gets right back up. Mysterio says uh, that WrestleMania was embarrassing. And he felt like he let his friends and family down. And he says he's got to move ahead. Says he knows he's the better man, and tonight he's going to prove it. So that was the uh, little interview with Rey Mysterio. Then we have Becky Lynch come out. Becky ends up saying she figures she has two options protect or fight. And she only knows how to fight. She says she knows the odds, and a year ago, nobody thought she could main event WrestleMania or beat the unbeatable Ronda Rousey. But here she is, Becky Two Belts, which got a chant uh, from uh, the crowd, you know, Becky Two Belts. She says the fans know her whole career has been a long shot, and nothing she's done has been an accident. She says for months she ran her mouth about Charlotte holding the titles hostage. And that no way she does that herself. Becky says uh, she didn't make history by dodging anybody. And that she made it by beating everybody. And she wants to bring on her opponents. And... She says, you know, Charlotte has her pedigree, but Becky, the man, still has her number. She ends up calling Lacey Evans a plank. She says, uh, Lacey is a tremendous athlete with a great right hand. But 
Lacey's making a mistake by punching someone who likes it. And uh, she ends up saying uh, she'll tell Lacey exactly when and where her beating is coming. And that's at Money in the Bank. And so we saw a recap of what Lacey did last week where she attacked uh, Becky with the, uh, with the woman's right. Uh, after the match that Becky had with uh, Alicia Fox. And uh, Becky ends up calling out Lacey for payback. So Lacey Evans ends up making her, making her way out. She says, Lacey says, it's just like a man to want what he wants, when he wants. And she can see that you know, the Irish temper in Becky is bubbling up. She says she's trying her best to not lose her manners and that she warned Becky last week to not let her emotions get the best of her and that Becky didn't listen. And Lacey was like, oh, I'm done talking. And so we had a brawl from Becky and Lacey. Uh, Lacey ends up uh, getting a Side headlock on Becky. Uh, she ends up punching uh, Becky. Referees end up coming down to pull the both of them apart to separate them. Becky ended up charging in. Uh, she ended up uh, punching uh, Lacey. Agents came from the back. You know the road agents came from the back uh, to break uh, the both of them apart. Lacey ends up you know chart. Ends up charging right into, uh, you know, the punch. But she ends up, you know, she ends up uh, throwing uh, her own at Becky. You know, it's just, you know, they get end up getting separated again. And uh, that was basically uh, what happened. So, Becky is ready for Lacey Evans come Money in the Bank. Then we had Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins versus The Revival. Uh, this match itself, you know, it was you know, okay. So, but Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins end up getting the win. Ryder end up, uh, Zack Ryder end up pinning uh, Scott Dawson. So there you go. The, the Revival still getting buried. And uh, from what I heard, uh, WWE uh, wants uh, the Revival to stay for uh, five years. Because uh, I read in the news, I read in the news, uh, the wrestling news today. If I could uh, get it up here, yeah, WWE uh, reported, you know, WWE offered the Revival. Uh, massive contracts. It was five-year contracts, and they ended up declining it. Uh, which, you know, that that would be that would be good. You know, that's good because why, you know, stay here for five for five years, and if you're just gonna keep if WWE is just gonna keep get keep burying and burying you. You know, I'm glad that they did not. I'm glad that they did not sign it. Good. Let their contracts run out, and have them go to AEW, where they will be treated rightly, and they could do whatever they want. So. Wait. Then we had a. Uh, after that match, we had a. Uh, Sarah Schreiber, uh, she was interviewing The Miz about what Shane uh, did earlier. And Miz goes on to say that he is challenging Shane to a steel cage match at Money in the Bank. Uh, which later on in the night, Shane ended up accepting. So at Money in the Bank, we're getting a steel cage match 
uh, The Miz versus Shane. Yeah, so, sorry about that, but, uh, like I was saying, we're getting that match, the steel cage match at Money in the Bank. The Miz versus Shane. Then we had Sami Zayn end up coming out. Sami says last week he was kind enough to share images of his life outside the toxic prison walls of WWE. And the joy he experienced, you know, wasn't just a couple of lonely trips, but the result of a lot of deep uh, introspection that he had time to rekindle his love of history and sociology, psych psychology, and that helped him make sense of us. And, you know, he says the new dynamic of this relationship is he will give and we take whatever he offers. He says people come up and attack him left and right, telling him if he doesn't like WWE, he should just quit. And he ends up asking the crowd, to, you know, to see if that's what they want. If they want Sammy to leave and quit the WWE. He says, uh, quitting WWE would be amazing. But you know what would be more amazing? Coming out here week after week and holding every single one of us accountable for our actions. So, he was like, Coming out here week after week and calling us out for our crap and being the critic of the critics. So that was just Sami Zayn, you know, you know, saying all that. But really liking this Sami Zayn. Uh, but I hope they don't give him the uh, the Elias treatment where he just comes out here, talks. He hasn't had any matches yet. So, but yeah, I'm really liking this Sami Zayn. So, I mean, it was, a, it was the only uh, decent uh, segment, uh, well, first decent segment from uh, Raw tonight. And so we have Rey Mysterio versus Samoa Joe. Uh, before the match got in the way, Samoa Joe ended up getting on the mic. And he says, you know, what Rey Mysterio and his son, uh, you know, er that happened earlier tonight was very touching. And he says he knows something about Dominic. He says he supports his dad, but Joe sees a son who's ashamed of his dad. Ashamed of how quickly Joe put him to sleep at Quigley. Ashamed of how quickly he put Ray to sleep at WrestleMania. He says if Mysterio was any kind of father, he'd have bought his son a mask to save him from the public shame. He says last week, Styles used Ray to steal his Universal Championship opportunity. And at tonight, there will be a reckoning. Joe says if Ray thought WrestleMania was bad, Tonight will make that pale in comparison. So then Rey Mysterio ended up coming out. Then we had the match. Which uh, the match itself. You know, it was meh. So Rey Mysterio ended up getting the win. Uh, rolled up uh, Joe. So, yeah, overall meh match. Then we had uh, the uh, AJ Styles and Seth Rollins uh, contract signing for the Universal Championship at Money in the Bank. Michael Cole was in the ring. He ended up introducing uh, Styles and Seth. Seth Rollins. Styles ends up saying that he that you know he made SmackDown the house that AJ Styles built, and that he's proud of that. He says, this is Raw with the craziest fans. And that he's always liked Seth. He says he's known Seth many years and that he's a good guy. But he's got something 
he wants. And that is the Universal Championship. He says, you know, that, you know, you both know that you want something bad enough, you'll do unexpected things to get it. And he's like, he said before, winners find the way. And Seth is a winner. He was like, how many times it ha it's been said that Seth is the new AJ Styles? And he says so many times. He's stronger. He's faster. Younger. And he says the hard truth is that Seth will never be the phenomenal. Will not be phenomenal as him. And so Seth agrees and says he never wanted to be the next anybody. And he's always wanted to be the first Seth freaking Rollins. Seth says he appreciates the compliment and the enthusiasm, but things are different on Raw. Seth says this is Monday Night Rollins. And he says Styles is right. And that he respects everything Styles did on SmackDown. He says he's going to have to be more than just phenomenal to take the title away. And Styles says he knows how much the title means and everything that he went through to get there. And he says, you know, he ran himself, you know, ragged and he was obsessed with being, you know, the workhorse. And he was like, but at what cost? He says, uh, he, he says, Seth, how are you holding up? And we hear the crowd starts chanting, you know, burn it down. Styles says he has no doubt they will and he'll build it back up. And he says to Seth, oh, how is, you know, how is he holding up without his shield brothers to keep him going, to hold him up? And, you know, AJ, you know, says he, like, he likes to build things up. He likes to burn, he likes to burn them down. Or as, that's what Seth said. Seth says, you know, AJ likes to burn, likes to build things up, but he likes to burn them down. And so we got uh, them signing the contracts. And, you know, they square up both, uh, Seth and Styles, and you know Seth ends up holding the Universal Championship high, and he gets in Styles's face, and Styles ends up, uh, you know, punching. Uh, you know, Styles ends up punching Seth. They brawl a little bit, and Seth uh, fires back, kicks Styles out of the ring. Uh, you know, he hits a suicide dive. Seth Rollins uh, comes back inside. AJ Styles uh, nails uh, Seth Rollins. AJ Styles uh, gets back up on the ring apron. And then he just uh, nails uh, Seth Rollins with the phenomenal forearm driving Seth Rollins through the table. And... Pretty much that's how basically uh, Raw ended tonight. But uh, this was the uh, the second uh, decent thing that I liked about Raw tonight. Uh, the first being Sami Zayn, the Sami Zayn segment, and uh, this one. Uh, this is a dream match that we all wanted to witness. See AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna happen at Money in the Bank for the. Universal Championship, and I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, these guys going at it. I think it's going to be a decent, enjoyable match at Money in the Bank between the both of them. So, looking forward to it. So, yes. Yeah, so anyways, uh, that's it for my review of tonight's uh, Money Night Raw. And uh, oh, I forgot to say during the. Uh, the Kurt Hawkins, Zack Ryder, and uh, Revival match. You know, there were some people in the chat in the crowd uh, chanting, uh, "Shave your back, shave your back." I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh my god.
<laughs> yeah, it's a whole, a whole stupid, you know, Wild, you know, Usos filming uh, Dash Wilder, you know, shaving Scott Dawson's back. Fucking ridiculous. No, but. Anyways, that's it for uh, the Mighty Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Uh, definitely uh, give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And if you guys haven't checked out my previous video that I uploaded earlier, I talked about how WWE announced a new pay-per-view, which is uh, replacing uh, Backlash uh, called uh, Stomping Grounds, which I think it's a dumb, stupid name. Not as bad as uh, the Great Balls of Fire uh, title for uh, that pay-per-view, though. But it's still, it's still a dumb name for pay-per-view. And uh, the next video. Uh, which will be coming up uh, tomorrow. I did get to see Avengers Endgame uh, today. So that will be the next video. My movie review of Avengers Endgame. There won't be spoilers. Uh, because it's kind of hard. It's going to be kind of hard for me to explain. You know the plot to the film. Uh, without you know giving away spoilers. So that will be the next video uh, coming up uh, tomorrow. My movie review of Avengers Endgame. So, yes, anyways, uh, that's it for this video. Give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And until the next video, which will be my movie review of Avengers Endgame, I will see you all tomorrow with that review.